Greetings and thank you for joining this session on direct linking BRISCAD with Twinmotion. The model that we are focusing on is our Hexagon PPM headquarters located in Huntsville, Alabama. In this session, I will demonstrate how to link the BRISCAD model with Twinmotion and perform model changes that are directly updated into Twinmotion. Before we link the building layout, let's take a look at the building model. The model is a representation of the Hexagon PPM headquarters, which is modeled in BRISCAD and separated by various layers for each of the building components. The main architectural building model has the structural, patio, and the company logos as attached reference files. In order to have Twinmotion recognize the model that is being edited in BRISCAD, we first need to establish a data connection between the two applications. First select the View tab, then Datasmith Twinmotion Connect. After the connection is initiated with the model, open Twinmotion to complete the direct link. Under the Import, select Import Direct Link. After selecting Import Direct Link, your source file will be recognized from BRISCAD. Once the connection has been created, return to BRISCAD and sync the model back to Twinmotion. Again, on the View tab, select Datasmith Twinmotion and synchronize. Now that the model is synced, you can use the scene graph to find the model in the viewport. The model is now connected and synced between the two applications, and now you can begin to make modifications to the model in BRISCAD and sync the changes back to Twinmotion. Let's turn on the various layers to expose some additional geometry. I will also turn on the patio reference file to show those features as well. Now that the layers have been turned on in the BRISCAD model, you'll need to resync back to Twinmotion. Again, select the View tab, Datasmith Twinmotion, and synchronize. Return back to Twinmotion, let the synchronization complete, and now the updates appear in the model. Let's begin to do some preliminary material editing. Let's turn on our starting ground to give us a canvas to work on. I will also grab the architectural model and move it up slightly so that it is not below the grade. Once the model is in place, I can start to do some material editing to my building. Under my materials palette, I'll go ahead and select some glass. I'll find this turquoise material. Also material palettes, I have some metal features. I will select the brushed aluminum and again drag and drop those onto the appropriate surfaces in my model. I'll continue doing some further material editing under my concrete palette. I'll just grab this bare concrete and drag that onto my sidewalk and then um, edit the patio features by selecting this polished concrete and again just dragging and dropping those materials onto my surfaces. And finally, let me zoom in here and locate an area so that I can drag a material onto my hand railing. Back to my metals palette, I'll find a black carbon material and drag that onto my hand railing. Likewise, I can grab that same material and drag it onto the ribs of the building. Now that my material editing is more or less done, I've noticed that I have a loading dock pad that's not quite where I'd like it to be. So back in BRISCAD, I can go ahead and edit that. And since this is a reference file to the main model, I can do a reference edit. Once I am in the reference edit environment, I can zoom into the loading dock pad 
area and grab this front face of the slab and using the push-pull tool I can just drag that slab out 75 feet. Once I'm satisfied with the changes to that slab I can save those changes back to my main model. Once that has completed I just simply need to resynchronize my model back to twin motion. Return to my twin motion session. Let it complete its direct linking. And now I see the results of that modification to my structural model. So let's finish material editing my site here a little bit. So the first thing I can do is add some grass features to my starting ground. I can also add some lifelike features into my model here. So I'm going to zoom into that patio area and go to my characters palette. And under characters there's a variety of character groupings that I can drag and drop onto my scene. So again there's a grouping of five individuals and I can navigate and drag those around by using the gizmo. Additionally, there are some animated humans. Again, a fairly extensive library of individuals that you can drag onto your environment. So I'll grab uh, Dorian here and place him into my scene. And I, Through my gizmo, I can rotate him around a little bit. I also have controls over what he can do in terms of animation. Maybe he's drinking, uh, maybe he's on the phone. So you have controls over what kind of animation he has. I can also change his, his pose. Uh, perhaps he's dancing, so he's a he's a happy guy at work. So we'll move Dorian over here. Other animated features in here, such as animals. Again, a fairly extensive library of animals that you can drop into your scene. I can grab Felix the cat, drop him into the scene, and have him join in the conversation with that group of people. Twinmotion also has a fairly extensive library of components that you can also drop into your scene, such as these chairs. Um, so not everything needs to be modeled in BriskCAD. You can also just use the library of content that is included in BriskCAD or in Twinmotion. For instance, under the construction palette, I can grab this ladder and bucket object and drop that into my scene. Twin Motion also allows you to have what is called a user library, which is customizable by you. So you can drag and populate this user library with whatever components you want from other projects, such as this table and chair component. So I can go ahead and clone or copy them as instances. So I'll clone them five more times. And you can see how quickly you can populate your scene by just cloning those objects. I can also material edit those objects. So if I grab those chairs and I change and I want to change the color of those chairs to something else, perhaps a green or maybe a blue. And because they were instance copies, the change to those chairs is propagated throughout all those instance copies. Twinmotion also has the ability to propagate your scene with vegetation. So with this vegetation paint tool, I can drag and drop various trees into my painting palette. And I can use this paintbrush and adjust the diameter of my paintbrush, perhaps around 80 some feet. And I'm provided with this 3D paintbrush that I can start painting my landscape onto my scene. So very quickly you can start adding life and texture to the scene very, very quickly. Twin Motion also has the ability to let you adjust the time of day. So just adjusting the slider, you can see how quickly you can adjust the time of day from morning to evening. It's a very handy tool for perhaps 
conducting sun studies on a particular building. Twinmotion also has a VR interface which supports various VR hardware such as the Oculus Rift or the HTC Vibe. Finally, I can quickly create a simple fly through of my building to showcase my work. So under the media tab, I can go to video and select that scene as my first keyframe. And then I can navigate over to the left side of this building and set up my second keyframe. Once I'm satisfied with where I want to be on keyframe two, I hit the plus next to the image. I can also adjust specific aspects about that keyframe. In this case, I will change its time of day from later in the evening so that when I save that keyframe and refresh it, when I run my animation, not only am I able to do the orbit or fly around, but it will also change the time of day simultaneously. After spending some time refining the model materials and adding some additional content, you'll be able to produce some stunning animations very quickly, such as this.